<laughs> Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, July 17, 2022. Howard, are those real glasses or they're just, we just want to look smart? These are unfortunately two times magnifiers with like uh, computer blues, whatever. I was wearing like the Walgreens $20 ones, mm -hmm. but they're just so bad. Like, so I just had a pair uh, with a real lens, like with like a, not a, uh, a Walgreens lens. Mm -hmm. How do they look? Pretty good. Pretty good. Got a haircut. Yeah. We look a little bit alike when I got a haircut. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> you seem thrilled. Twins. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> and uh, rip. yeah, let's talk about the market. Um, big, big CPI report last week, uh, record inflation and accelerating nine point, what was it? 9.2, something like this. Um, but it seems like the market shook it off. Like it had all the reasons to really sell off on, on those numbers because they would mean that the Fed will remain aggressive <clears throat> or even become more, more aggressive than it already is. Yeah. But the market didn't sell off, which is bullish. You know, when stocks don't sell off on bad news, uh, it means the sentiment has improved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already starting to see that in select stocks, I mean, it's still really slim pickings uh, when it comes to really stock, stock setting up and acting constructively. And most of them are really in the healthcare space, um, like especially biotech. Uh, as you can see here, the biotech index, like definitely constructive uh, price volume action in the past um, three yeah. weeks. You can see the updates that are much bigger volume than the down days. And it's kind of just making higher highs, higher lows above its rising 20 day. So that's constructive. Oh, obviously still below its 200 days. So still in a long-term downtrend, but we're seeing some individual- Give me the, uh, let's take a look at the weekly. Oh yeah. Oh, on, on XBI, sure. Let, let, let's take on, on the weekly. So as I said, yeah. longer term is still a mess. Short term, if you're like a swing, swing trader, uh, the, there's definitely some crash. Uh, like there's a swing trader heaven. I mean, there's nothing for me here. Positive developments. Um, so some, you know, there's some biotechs that are kind of talked about this last week. Yeah, acting constructively, setting up um, this one, Harmony, and we have Halozyme. Just the dips in biotech just keep uh, getting bought. You know, which is which is positive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you remember back in back in 2008, 2009, when the indices uh, bottomed in March, March 9, 2009. But actually, if you look at the biotech, the biotech uh, ETF, it bottomed in November. So a few months ahead of that. So maybe this year we might see something similar, you know, especially taking into account that it's a midterm election year. The market, it's typically very weak ahead of the midterm elections and then very strong right, right after them, November and December. So we might see something similar play out with the year-end rally. And then we're already seeing, you know, sectors like biotech already maybe bottomed and uh, starting to move up. I mean, obviously a big factor is that um, Treasury stopped uh, selling off for now because the market- the moment, there's still just, I yeah. mean, yeah, they need to, just still so oversold, but we just, there's not a, like, think about this. Like, look how oversold we were on this and just nothing. You know, a five percent, ten percent move. Yeah, it's a, it's a more tiny scary bounce, to me. Yeah. Like I, like I agree with what you're saying, but as a long-term trend follower, like with the dollar this strong, like there's trouble out there, right? Like maybe the U.S. doesn't. Maybe the U.S. pre data this, but like if you look at like PayPal, which I own some, and uh, I'm about to get stopped at, but like you see PayPal, which I was dabbling in in the '70s. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just not holding. And then you go look at, uh, so it's down 80%. It's crazy. No, so if, you look at, like, if you look at the ones that I used to follow in, in Latin America, for example, PAGs, um, I'm trying to think of the ones that I was following. So they're down like 90%. So it's like, Latin, like the strong US dollar is like a, like, yeah. So Mercado Libra, I'm, I'm watching because, you know, that gets down to the two, three hundreds of a, of a dollar crisis here. This is one of the great Latin American internet companies. 
So, but when you see the US dollar this strong, again, recent history, 25, 30 years, this does not end well because debt's denominated, like global conditions are tightening. Forgetting about just the US, what Canada's raised a point. Um, you know, every, debt's denominated in US dollars generally. And so dollars get tighter and that is not good. Historically, that is just not, that, that usually ends in some kind of crisis. In the 90s, we had the Asian yeah. contagion and then we had Latin American debt defaults and, and you know, throw a war in, throw some famine in, throw, uh, you know, elections in. Um, yeah, this, this ILF, you get like, look at that, right? It was starting to look pretty solid like a couple months ago and then just taking out all those lows. Yeah, so yeah, emerging market definitely. I mean, the, the silver lining is that a strong US dollar is deflationary. So yeah, you, like the Bulgarian with silver lining. Like, uh, it's the opposite. Usually it's the crazy American and now I gotta, I gotta rely on you for the optimism. So what's the silver lining? I mean, something optimistic. I mean, obviously, uh, What's good for for one part of the world is bad for another. Uh, so yes, uh, there's like all the hundred. Right, so we got to bail out Latin America. One hundred and thirty like, trillion in. We can't afford bailouts anymore. U.S. denominated debt. So yeah, it's it's it could be a big issue, but it's also deflationary. So at least we don't need to worry about inflation. Correct. So so right now we're in a global contraction. Everybody's hitting the brakes on growth. And so I feel like there's another shoe or two to drop in tech. There's no way, like Apple's, everybody's talking about the relative strength break, you know, breakout in the relative strength of Apple, but like that's reaching, you know, stocks 15% all, below all time highs. So it's like people are, that all it means to me is that people are hiding out in, in Apple. And I don't know. I mean, it, three trillion, it's not like liquor. It's not like a growth story. Everybody already owns an iPhone. Um, you know, I think we need a growth area and crypto is right now in a, in a in kind of a bear market or black, you know, kind of winter because of over promise under deliver. So I think why you're seeing Apple so strong is that's all we got, right? It's still a smartphone world. There's nothing new and, you know, and EVs are interesting, but like Musk is casting all kinds of weird, you know, doubt on the company just with his lunatic behavior and his focus on weird things. Yeah, the Chinese ones are looking more interesting. Yeah. So, week, so EV you know. is interesting. Where's oil at this week? I mean, oil continues continues to pull back. Uh, in general, the question Musk is: Is this a pullback you buy? Like, is this the XL? Is this the last chance you have? Yeah, most commodities are pulling back uh, in the past month. Question is, is this a good? This is really the one that's interesting to me. Like, I'm not into energy, but like, is this a great, you know, opportunity for a, 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 a midterm, not a midterm, but a medium term long in energy uh, with this pullback? Hard, well, if you if you're bullish energy, say, energy here, you probably have. Yeah, if you're bullish energy, this is your bearish bag. tech. <laughs> Yeah. So, so if you look at like Exxon's pulled back 25%. So if you're bullish energy, um, now's your chance, I guess, to buy beginning of the year prices in oil. And what you were pulling up wheat before, wheat's below where uh, Russia invaded. Uh, it's just one example that all, all commodities- The breakout there is when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine in February. Most commodities have, have really pulled back. It's not just wheat, it's just coffee or and cotton and anything you can um, think of has really pulled back in the past month and a half, two months, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, will help it with inflation down the road as, uh, yeah. as the commodities are, uh, are pulling the question down. Is, was, this, was this inflation just cured by high prices itself and the Fed didn't need to raise rates? So, so the, real, the real question here is, was that, did everybody blink, did the Fed blink because like I said, if we have an energy problem, raising rates may slow down speculation in tech, but it sure the hell doesn't help drill, you know, between environmentalists and high rates. I mean, we're not going to solve the energy problem, which is really yeah, the problem we've got to solve continually, it seems to be. But yeah, especially in Europe, it's, it's definitely uh, the major issue. Well, they're uh, starting to open up old coal factories. What was the, the Euro 50 um, 
So let, let, let's pull up Germany for just as a yeah, comparison. I mean, so definitely oil. Doesn't, oh look, my goodness. doesn't look pretty. So Germany is getting new here. all time, whatever, uh, 52 week lows. Wow. So, so Germany, the index is down like back to COVID. So they don't have tech. So they don't have, that shows you without Apple and without like, like, you know, so this is only going to make them anti-US tech too, because they're the next tech go around, they want to own. Yeah. Um, so we, listen, there's so many problems. Again, this, it, and so I've been like sentiments really negative. Yeah, there's a like, geez, so inflation's raging there. I've been talking to my friends there uh, between energy and just food. Um, so Italy's a mess. So, so I think I want to be bullish when everybody's bearish, but I don't think everybody's, I don't think people are bearish enough for the conditions we're in. So it's like a rare moment where I don't want to like buy the dips. Mm -hmm. um, I just I can't get a rally. Like you're saying like it was good news that we didn't sell off. I agree. <laughs> But it is the summer. But like it, well, it's not just down. that. There's some select pocket pockets of strength, Howard, and most most of them in, in healthcare. Obviously, it's nothing that you know you can get excited about. Uh, okay, no, which was it? UNH, uh, like United Health Group. You know, yeah, McKesson. Is, I saw MCK. That was like MCK. Right yeah. So there's some bullish action in just the entire healthcare space, like uh, hospitals and you know healthcare facilities. And um, um, just don't like seeing these being the leaders because they're ripping off the American. These are all like this is an industry that hasn't really integrated tech yet, so it's just a huge drain. Yeah, on this one is interesting. I think uh, Vero because uh, they make female condoms, so I guess it's something that it's a play on the on is this the a spec item or something. This could be a spec. Uh, I don't think it's a spec. Uh, it's a play on the abortion issues in the US. So as you can see, it's not a spec. I mean, it's been a, a dollar like what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. Here we go. It go, goes all the way to the 2000s. Okay. So it's, it's kind of near the story old, stock. Old time high. So it's a story stock, definitely. They don't even have the growth yet. It's yeah. just a story stock. Yeah. Um, also, there's some interesting setups in the um, like beverage, beverage space. Uh, Celsius is just a fitness drink, I guess. Uh, I mean, I personally I don't consume it, but the stock is acting constructively, you know, kind of trying to build the right side of a new base and they have yeah. the growth, look yeah. 800%. You know, it's some market, earnings. I hear people on stock which talking about it, but yeah, I, I just, I'm um, not a user of these products. Yeah. Obviously the other one, Monster also kind of setting up, um, no. the coconut water also recent IPO. So mm. this is one of the industries that is showing uh, some strength. And then are you mostly, you're just cash and swinging? Yeah, I'm swinging, uh, definitely. Still uh, a large uh, cash position and just taking some short-term swings um, because, you know, here and there, you know, I see some good opportunities and I'll just uh, just yeah. take advantage of them. I would usually sell half intraday. Yeah. Let's say if I risk a dollar and if I'm up at least a dollar intraday, I would just take half just to remove yeah. my risk and then I can just swing the rest uh, for the next two or three days, but definitely my holding period is not really longer than three days at this point, uh, short term, um, as of right now. Yeah, I see the one bright spot for me is I'm finally seeing, we're seeing it, you know, if you look at the social, where all the talent was, social network, or I say talent loosely, but um, yeah, if you look at this index, there's going to be so much, so many people freed up and wanting with some capital to start their own companies again. So you're going to see all the employees I was telling this to the chart report guys on Friday, but you're going to see Snapchat people going to Twitter, Twitter people going to Snapchat, because they're all going to be repricing their options. Like if you if you worked at Snap in the last two years and were hired, you're under, you're not, you, your salary got cut in half. So you're only weighed to, to level set. You'll get recruited by a competitor in the space and go reset your options by changing jobs. So product people will be flopping back and forth between Tinder and Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter. But a lot of people will leave to start something. And because of the, and I mean, a lot of people are leaving, which will create an incredible amount of supply of founders, which should bring down the prices in startups. Um, so it's been two years since I've been excited about startups. 
And um, so the one thing this market's doing is shaking out, you know, people that in their thirties that want to go start something. What we don't have is an easy way to get new customers, right? So, so that should bring down prices and, and, and level set startups, I hope. Uh, but I'm starting to see a lot of interesting ideas. What 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 I struggle with is how you're going to get new users uh, because you can't just go buy Facebook ads. Those things are priced to perfection. Same with Apple and Google. So really interesting. Isn't, isn't crypto supposed to solve that since it kind of incentivizes? The well, users? but they had token. It was all fucking scammy tokenomics, and that was, turned out to be fake. As I never I never bought into that because you you know. Giving someone money to use your product uh, as your sole source of customer acquisition could lead to a lot of bad, as we've seen, lead to a lot of bad results. You need people to want to share a product for free. Like what, what made Robinhood and Facebook and all these Snapchat grow so fast? You weren't paying people to use the product. People were just like excited to use product, Tinder. Um, Crypto is just purely financial so far. And there's only so much, when someone tells you, I get, you know, when someone's getting tokens to, or getting paid like an affiliate to, to bring you customers, those are generally not the best customers. And so we've seen how that ends. That just ends with massive supply and that's why crypto is where it is. Um, so no, I'm very negative on that. And so crypto's got to re, crypto's got to reinvent good products like actually have good products. So again, these are all things that line up on why I'm not thrilled to be buying stock. Big week for earnings. I think Netflix reports this week. Yeah, um, Netflix, there, there's some rumors that uh, they're starting a free service with advertising. Yeah, well, using, they are. They're using Microsoft. As, they're using Microsoft uh, Bing, yeah. They're using Microsoft. So- um, uh, Who else? Tesla, Tesla, Twitter, uh, and then a bunch of financials. Uh, JPM reported. Uh, Missed, missed estimates on like on Thursday, basically the entire financial sector. We were back at 2018 prices. So if we pull yeah. up the if we pull up the XLF, what I worry about with Latin American debt is that you see 2016 prices. Um, if you go to the weekly. I think we start seeing like the low 20s, mid 20s, which takes us back to 16, 2016, 2017 prices. So I I uh, so I'm, I'm just I hope I'm wrong. Put it that way. I hope I'm wrong. The, okay. uh, but let's, that, that's enough for today. We'll catch I mean, I think people yeah, know that sure. there's not that much out there. I mean, people just need to be really to, to continue to take the summer off, I think. Yeah, most people, yeah. That's a good yeah. advice. All, All right. right. See you next week. See you next week.